gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's your boy, the Nonprofit Sector Connector, coming at you just below the roof, above the second floor from my attic. It's where I am every Friday morning, where I bring to you another executive leader of a nonprofit organization. It's your buddy, Tommy D. I tell you this all the time. Nonprofits change our world each and every minute of every hour, of every day, of every month, of every year, decade, millennium, the whole deal, right? Millennial, millennium, whatever it is. Here's the situation. If it wasn't for the work that nonprofits do, if it wasn't for the, the vision of these nonprofit leaders and the hard work that their teams do and the volunteers do, I really, I, I, I'm at a loss. I don't know who would do this work. I, 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 is it the government? I, I, who, who does the work? So the deal for me is this. I get a little cranky about it because I think this, this sector gets overlooked, underfunded, as, as many of us know, and often overrated. And my answer to that is philanthropy and focus. So I get cranky and then I get answers. And the answer is I bring on these leaders to talk about their organizations, to tell us their stories, to tell us what they do, what their passions are, and how they're making an impact. Today is no different than any other week. And I have James Corbett with me this morning, who is the founding director of Project Refit. I'm going to read you a little something off my phone. James Corbett has helped launch various nonprofit programs in the past before developing his own nonprofit, Project Refit. James studied at Stockton University for his undergrad degree and Columbia University for his master's. He eventually left Columbia, where he was studying negotiation and conflict resolution to pursue building a business to help, to help solve problems the world faces. Well, one of the problems the world faces is specifically in this country is that our veterans who go and, and sacrifice and, and volunteer and uh, some unfortunately tragically pay the ultimate sacrifice, they're, they're not taken care of as best as they should be. And I'm not gonna take anything away from James telling this story, but that's what I know about our veteran community. James Corbett, I like to tell everybody when they come to the attic, I say, welcome to the show. And I always say that even before I had a show, man, I used to go around saying, welcome to the show. Like I thought I was like running a show, like my whole life is a show. So talk to me, man. Like, you know, what, where, what, what was it? What drew you to nonprofit? What drew you to this cause? Just tell me the story, man. So, uh, you know, the thing that really draws me, as soon as you said that, the first thing that came to my brain actually for the nonprofit drawing uh, or being drawn to it. Uh, I remember when I was in, uh, I was actually at Columbia and I was a part of this organization called YGLF. And uh, I had this opportunity to speak on my project. I actually did a program where I was helping with domestic violence response and I was on the domestic violence response team. And I actually, uh, I actually had an opportunity to speak at New York Island's Peace Institute alongside of a, uh, it was a diplomat from like, I don't know, I think like Cuba or something. Um, and, and the, I mean, no disrespect. I didn't like the guy. I didn't like the way he was speaking, none of that stuff. And I kind of got up there and I spoke about my program, but the reason why I didn't like that guy so much is because the hope wasn't there. Right. And when he spoke, um, and whenever I hear a leader speak, I, I expect that leader to instill something of hope, right. No matter what the conversation is. And, uh, I mean, down to the smallest, uh, inkling of hope, right? Like, I mean, something like, hey, I appreciate you, right? Like even something as small as that, that just gives and offers some hope. Like I'm appreciated. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, I take the, the role of being a leader and, and, and kind of stepping into that role very, very seriously. Um, and even this fight that we're in here for uh, veterans and first responders, uh, it's, uh, it's one that I also don't take very lightly because lives are literally at risk. And what drew me to it is, I think, a couple of things, man. To be honest with you, I also, not only the hope factor and trying to give hope to those who uh, really gave us the opportunity for me to even have that hope, right? Um, but also, I think it's the challenge, right? The, the, actual, the actual challenge of what we're facing here isn't one that they're not taking care of because there's 45,000 other nonprofits out there that try to help. Um, there's the VA that tries to help. I think it's actually somebody needs to step in and say something different, right? So we're, we're stepping in and we're bulldogs. We're, we're bulldogs, we're pit bulls, we're chihuahuas, whatever other shit you want to say, Northern Inuit dogs, I don't know. What, so, was, the last uh, one? what was the last one? 
Northern Inuit dogs. They're the, uh, <laughs> they look like wolves. They, they, you never see Game of Thrones? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's actually, those are Northern Inuit dogs. They're okay. Tamaskans. They, they're, they're, wolf do- they're not wolf dogs, but they look like, they're dogs that look like wolves. Anyway. So, so, so um, this, is a, this is a nonprofit with, with some swag. This is a badass nonprofit. This we're, is- we're badass. I would right. say that we're aggressive. We're the most aggressive. We've been, we've been nicknamed the most aggressive nonprofit out there. Um, and I really appreciate that because uh, that means we're in your face and we're saying, hey, stop doing what you're doing. Stop thinking the way you're thinking. Get the help that you need. Let's move. Right. Like it's like a wake up call. Right. Um, and but we're also able to sit back and just listen. Right. And we're telling people you can do that. You can just listen to each other. You are allowed because the, the thing is, and I'm going to say this to you guys now. Um, the thing you got to think about is ancient warfare. Okay. Let's think, let's, I'm going to take you guys back for one minute. What's one minute worth of talking here? Um, go back to ancient warfare. There's guys that sit around in a circle, uh, you know, in between, you know, various fighting because fighting would last for like 10 minutes and then it would break, take a rest and go back to killing each other, take a break and then go back to killing each other. Right. And then they would go back to their camp for the night after a long day of fighting. And what do you think these guys would do? You think they would just sit there and, and they would just be, you know, just sitting there? No, they're talking to each other about the day of fighting. It's obvious, right? Like, right, you're not right. just going to, they used to have, the reason why I say it's obvious is because they even, they even found them Pompeii um, quotes and shit, right? They, they found plaques and quotes on it. Humans talk. That's how we get to know, that, that's what we're doing here. I mean, like, right, that's... Yep. That's how you get stuff off your chest. Yep. And the fact that we keep on, and one of the most uh, crazy things to me is that we keep telling people, you know, don't talk to each other. The, the worst thing you can do with a human population to a human being in general is silence them, right? So the, the fact that we're telling guys that they can't talk to each other to me is bonkers. So we're trying to build up programs and, and applications and try to separate ourselves from the pack by telling people, Peer-to-peer support works, and you should start making this a conversation. When you talk to your buddy from the military, ask him how he's doing, right? Like, mm-hmm. let him know, yo, I'm here for you, brother. Like, how are you? It's like, well, I'm all right, man. It's been rough. Cool. Tell me what's going on. Or, man, I'm great. I'm doing awesome. Awesome. Right. Tell me more. You yeah. know, like, either yeah. way, like, have the conversation. Either way, open them up, right? Open each other up, right? Because exactly. that's what you want. You know, man, listen, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to... Some of this stuff is, look, I, I've never served in the military. I, I've never, you know, been a first responder any, either. So what I'm going to say is from my own, just my viewpoint and perspective on things like this. But I, you know, as, a, as somebody who, as a civilian who never served, yeah, I like to talk. I like to learn. I like to speak to people. So why should we assume that somebody went over who's another human being and, and served, why they wouldn't want to talk and open up too? I, or you know, maybe they, I know you're going to tell it's me a little harder. You're going to tell me that. And I want to hear all that. But what I'm saying is on the, on the surface as humans, they have the same need, whether they want to, or they, they feel mm. comfortable doing it. Matt, that's where right. I was going with that. They have the need. They're right. just, they're a human being too. They just went and did some things that a lot, most of us never will see and be involved with. So my point is not that they, you know, I need to open up. I need to connect with people. I'm all about connecting, right? I call myself the nonprofit sector, connect all that stuff because I want to learn. Right. So um, I just think they these individuals who've seen some things and, and need to talk about things, they want or have the, the need to open up as well, whether they see it or not. Is that fair to, to, to assume? A hundred percent, man. Yeah. Actually. And the other thing, too, is it's it, I think it's hard because uh, go back again, ancient warfare. Those guys would always be, they would always be around each other for the rest of their lives. Right. They would die. Right on. It wasn't like it wasn't together. And then you right now you serve. And then everybody goes in, in their separate direction. Yeah. Right? And it's, yeah. and it's, and when they go and it's, you know, these guys back in ancient warfare, they're 19 years old. They're dead by their, by 1920. Right. Like right. some of them make it to 30, you know, but even still, uh, you know, they, they, they go in, they fight, they're together, they're doing their thing and then they leave. But nowadays when you leave, you leave for 40, 50, 60 years, you're gone. Right. right. You're live. And, like, yeah. and, and you don't see those guys again. They always say it's still about how, and the other thing too is transportation, right? Like Dan was saying, he's like, I'm, I'm in Iraq or I'm sorry, I'm in Afghanistan and I'm back in the States in like 27 hours. What, 
What you were just in combat twenty seven hours ago? Just, like just in combat, and now you're like at Dunkin' Donuts. Twenty seven hours ago, you're in combat. Right. Now you're home. Oh, okay, that makes okay. When did you talk to your boys about combat? We just left, right? Like they didn't have time to just you know they didn't have time to just talk to each other. Like in World War Two, it took them four months to get home. God. That's like the God. last time that you had these guys together for an extended period of time you know, where they were able to actually actually have conversations with each other when they're on their way back uh, about their brothers that died, about the combat that they were in, about the shit that they saw, yeah, about yeah. the rats that they killed and ate to, to sustain life. Like, like the, you know what I mean? Like they had time to talk. Now it's, you know, 27 hours later, here I am. I'm in and my you're backyard. Back. Now you're, supposed, my, to, my you're supposed to assimilate, right? You're supposed to just go back into like what you didn't, like you didn't just experience that for months or years at a time, right? Yeah, exactly. You it, mentioned Dan. So who, who's Dan? Because we, we, let's do it. Dan is, uh, he's one of the co-founders. You have Dan and Chris. They're the, we're the three original. Uh, Dan, Chris, and myself. Um, and Dan is an uh, Army uh, combat veteran. Uh, he was 11 Bravo, which means infantry. Uh, which actually, if you go to our logo, um, our logo, the color black that's in it yep. is actually the color code is one B one B one B one B one C. The so actual color code, down, like when you go to like the, the listing of colors, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even that blue that's in there is the infantry blue. And it's also PTSD. It's also represent PTSD. And then you have the no longer fight alone at the tip. Um, but yeah, we actually, uh, I, I made sure that when I was making this thing, it was, down to the down to the color code that we were on point you know that's wild and and if, the guy, no, one's, no one's gonna know that it's black right but you right. Knew, in your mind you knew for the for the mission of what this was you had to yep. have that right yeah yep and the guy all the way up there is actually bravo so this goes into more of the story about Dan. yeah tell me uh, about that. so the guy up there is bravo uh you know he's a combat veteran purple hearts just like dan um and uh dan was blown up twice the first time was the worst of the two uh, it was a 200 pound IED. It was a pretty big explosion. Um, and long, long story short, I remember Dan saying when he ta talks about this, Dan's like, you know, in the movies when shit slows down, man, it slows down when you're blown up. He's like, I don't know, he, because it's adrenaline. So there's actually something that happens in your brain with the chemicals with adrenaline that allows you, like, everything seems like it's going slower because you're processing shit so fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so everything slowed down for him and uh, he was trying to crawl out and uh, he thought he was just like, when he was like yelling, he's on fire. He's like, I'm on fire. He thought he was just doing it like that. Like, ah, but he was really blood curling screams yeah. that woke this guy, uh, this guy up. Bravo. Bravo. All the way at the top there. Um, that's an actual picture of him, by the way, that I rendered out and okay. then I put it in. Got it. Uh, so we, um, we, we, uh, he gets out of the vehicle. He's in the wadi, which is in Afghanistan. It's a riverbed, the wadi. And uh, Bravo jumps on top of him in case of ambush. So, uh, you know, and took him to cover and everything like that. So Dan was able to get out of there. But uh, it, it was rough, you know. Um, and that's, so that's I, where the story I, began. Yeah, when we, so that's a good place. We're going to take a quick break, everybody. But what, when we come back, I want to – how do you hook up with Chris and Dan and this whole story? I want to know where that comes from. We'll, we're going to talk about programs. Uh, we're going to talk about what the name means, Project Refit, because you've shared that with me offline. But, I, you know, let's let's teach everybody about that. So, everybody, it is Philanthropy and Focus. It's your boy, Tommy D, amplifying the message for nonprofit organizations. James Corbett's here with me from Project Refit. We'll be back in two minutes. Meet us in the attic. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc.
Are you interested in having a better relationship with yourself, others, and God? Greetings. I'm your host, Dr. George Andow, for the show, A Journey Through Into Awareness. On my show, we journey into the awareness that the mind of God is the true seat of our personal consciousness. We join together each Monday at 7 p.m., so tune in on 12th Radio NYC. Did you know that nearly one in five adults in the U.S. battles mental illness? Hi, my name is Albert Dabba. I'm the host of the show, Extra Innings. Extra Innings, I discuss the topics of wellness, mental health, and the experience of surviving multiple suicides within my family. Listen live every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern to Extra Innings for discussions with sports figures, artists, mental health professionals, and many others. That's Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So come through all the static. That's right, come through the static, join your boy Tommy D in the attic every Friday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, where I help amplify the message for nonprofit organizations. This morning, James Corbett's here for Project Refit. We were just really talking about the logo. We were talking about the color design. We were talking about ancient warfare. I don't know how we did all that inside of 14 minutes, but we did. We got to a lot of topics, man, and we're back, and we're going to continue from where we left off. So let's start with this. I want to know where you met or how you hooked in with Dan and Chris. And then I want to, you told me again, offline project refit, what it means, things like that. Let's talk about that. So uh, I'll, I'll start out real quick with uh, the, the name refit because it ties right into that story I was telling you about with Dan. He was blown up, Bravo, grabbing him, taking him to safety. Uh, and that's why Bravo has a, a place forever in our logo. So um and that's that's literally a picture of him in Afghanistan, by the way. Like I'm like all I mean like that's an actual photo. But anyway, so go and somehow you whatever are you, you do that like you're like yeah, yeah. I, I create all the logos and all that yeah. stuff. I'm uh I'm a jack of many trades. Wow, man, uh, Listen, I, uh, I love that. You might have to hook me up on my logo, man. You know I don't even see it before. This is it right now. I'll hook it up, brother. <laughs> Philanthropy and focus. I can hook that up. <laughs> I love that. No I actually like that though for a podcast. I, I drew it, bro. And it's a picture. I do self portraits, man. I'm I a, love that. I, people go, oh, wow, you're an artist. You draw. I go, no, I draw pictures of me. That's it. It, <laughs> ends, it starts there, it ends there. My kids think they're like, really, dad? Like, you're drawing yourself again? Like, it, uh, look, I'll t- we got to jump in the business here, but I'll tell you, my wife had made like, uh, she was making a box of pasta one night, and the pasta spilled all, like, before it was cooked, it spilled all over the counter. So I literally took all the little, the, like, uh, ziti. And I made a Tommy D face out of the ZD, man. So it's just like, <laughs> it's a caricature, brother. That's just what it is, man. I love that. <laughs> it's, it's good. I'm a big fan of me. All right. So what do we, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's refit mean? So how does that work? So, so, uh, so yeah. So what happens is like, let's go back to that story. So Dan's blown up. They got to go back to base. And when they go back to base at their combat mission, they actually have to do what's called refitting of the vehicles. So they refit their vehicles back in base uh, to get ready for mission. So for the next mission. And uh, so basically what we do is we're trying to treat ourselves as the guys where you go to refit yourselves, right? To refit what's going on. Like, you know, hey, I need a mission. I need something to do. I need a little bit of motivation. Um, I need to figure out what my passion is, all that kind of shit. We're, we're trying to help guys. We're not trying to help guys in a therapy sense. We're trying to help guys in a life sense, right? right. So. Yeah. Um, get them connected to their brothers and sisters again, give them a sense of community, listen to them what they need, and then help them find and, and get into the places that they need to get into, either through our own connections, through us, you know, marketing their stories to the world uh, so people can get jobs and or, or they can meet the right investors or whatever it may be. I don't care what it is. Like, I just want to help guys get in front of the right people. You're, so, connected. You're connecting them, man. You're like a hub. You're a post where they can come through and, you know, some might need. And then uh, we'll be there the whole time. Right? But you're going to, and you stick with them. But again, it might be, somebody might be, somebody might not be challenged with, with any mental health issues, but they need contacts. They need hookups. They need Correct. connections. So you'll provide that. Somebody else might need a hookup with the VA. You'll provide that, right? So whatever the, 
the angle, whatever the need However is. However we can help them, oh, we try well. to help them out, right. So um, just in case anybody's listening now and they don't end up finishing the show with us, how do they get in touch with you if they do need help and they hear us? Projectrefit.us, you can go there, or you can email me at J, the letter J, my first name is James, J at projectrefit.us. You can message Dan at D at projectrefit.us. We can message Chris C at projectrefit.us. I thought we had a mistake when I was sending you an email yesterday. I was like, his email can't just be the letter J. And I had to go back and like do research and everything like that. So J at Project Refit and Refit Everybody has one T at the end. That's right. Um, I might have put two when I was writing down last night, you know, but um, but I see it that in the logo. It's one T. So, all right. So if you need help, any sort of access to help, if you're a first responder, if you're a veteran and you serve this country, uh, James and his team are here to serve you right back at yeah. you. So, all right. So go ahead. So, so how I met, uh, it's a good segue into how I met Dan uh, and Chris. So first off, Chris is simple. Chris is one of my best friends, actually. He's a sergeant in the army. Uh, he's one of my best friends since we were like seven, 16 or 17 or something like that. Uh, you know, he, he and I essentially grew up together. Um, and, uh, you know, we've just, I was like, dude, do you want to help out with this? And he was like, dude, this is fucking, this is a great idea. And we'll get into the ideas and everything like that in a bit, but, uh, in the programs, but that's basically what it was. It was simple. Uh, and Dan, uh, Dan's was simple too. Cause Dan actually, uh, he, oh, at the time I was coming up with these ideas and doing independent research, uh, Dan made a, made a status. He's like, listen, everybody, I'm coming on Facebook. He's like, I'm coming. Cause I met Dan like one other time before, before this. Um, and Dan actually, uh, he was just getting back from Afghanistan and, uh, one of my buddy's girlfriends, who's a friend of mine too, Janae, uh, is friends with Dan. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go see my friend. He's back home from, uh, Afghanistan and fighting and, uh, or whatever. And we're going to go, you know, see him. And I was like, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm down to go out. Let's go. So we all went out and I met him. He's really cool. Um, well, he was cool. No, I'm just kidding. He was really cool. Good, good guy. Uh, and uh, he's hilarious. He's one of the funniest dudes you'll ever meet in your entire life, actually. Um, and I know that he probably doesn't want me to say that because that's a it's high thing to live up to. But I'll tell you what, he never disappoints. Once you get to know Dan, the dude never disappoints. So, uh, you know, that's that's where we um, we so he posted a status. Then like a year later, um, he posts a status that says, uh, I'm going to come back. I have PTSD. And if I'm an asshole, I'm sorry. You know, I'm working on myself. Right so on. Uh, he was real open. He yeah. was like, tell me right away. Like if I'm an asshole, yeah. it's because I literally was just blown up twice. He didn't say that in his status, but right. uh, if you got to know him, that's the story. I mean, the dude was blown up. He was in combat. He was shot at, he was shot at people. Like, I mean, that's, you, you go through a lot when you're in yeah. fucking combat. So um, uh, it, it's a sacrifice that you got to respect, you know? Um, no. you must, I mean, if you really think about it, that's something you must respect. So, uh, you know, he, you know, he put that up and I was like, that's a, that is the sign of a type of leadership, right? Not everybody can be that vulnerable and open. And that's the, that shit that yeah. we need in that community and in, uh, the community in general and in our modern world in general, this kind of vulnerability is important and huge. By, um, by, him, by him coming out and, and doing that and putting that out there, right, that now helps other people who you, you know, I, I, tell me if I'm wrong about what, what I've heard over the years. You know, there's, there's pride with veterans. They, they don't, they don't want to necessarily ask for things and, and, you know, they certainly don't want to look vulnerable, right? How about so, you, Tommy? No, I don't want to. I, I mean, you know what, bro, as I get older, I try to be more vulnerable. I really do. I try to be authentic, man. Um, right I think, and I think I do it on this when show. You were younger, did you ask for help a lot? No, no, no. Check it out. So no. take your take your own experience and your own honesty. Just there, it's yeah. not just veterans, man. Yeah, no, it's us. Right? It's just us. It's people, it's, right? It's men. It's really men. It's men. Yeah, yeah. Right on. It's men. All right. So like men are. It's hard for us to ask for help, and that's something that these guys learn in the military. They learn to constantly rely on the team, to constantly ask for help. And then they come back to a society, you and I, civilians, who are constantly not a team. Can you imagine coming home to a society that's not a team? It makes no sense. All, and, all, and all they know is, is team, you're saying. Is team. Right? Who can they trust when they come back to civilians? Think about that. We're the ones that are broken, right? That's the thing that I'm saying. 
we're the ones that are broken. We need people who are like me and maybe even eventually like you after I just blew your mind. And like, we begin to work more as a team to help these guys, right? It's, there's something broken with us that's breaking them. I think a reflection of your society is a reflection on your warrior, right? So if you look so at- the are, way, you saying, are you saying there's so much we can learn from the way they work as a unit when- Exactly, is what I'm saying. And if you look at, if you look at ancient, even uh, uh, Native American societies, how they used to fight, and when they, how they would welcome home their, their warrior. So uh, there's a Native American tribe out there that would welcome home their warrior by civilians, hero, by civilians piercing their, their or the, the tribesmen and women, piercing their own chest with, uh, with metal. And I'm not saying we should do this, but just listen to this. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. Pierce their chests with metal, their skin. They would walk around a pole and then they would lean back with the warriors and it would obviously tear eventually through the yeah. skin but they would feel the pain together. So the thing is, we're so not- That was that connection. That was that, right? Exactly. So, so now, now again, we don't necessarily need to do that physical harm to right. ourselves when they come, but some recognition of, of the heroism and the warrior nature of what these people are doing, right? Just right. An, an understanding, right? Well- it, Try to understand. And I think too, the thing we have to think about here is people say like, thank you for your service, but some, some people say it, and they don't even know what they're saying. They're just saying it, right? And, right? and you can tell when a person's just saying that shit to say it. And then when you, but instead, what if you're like, hey, man, uh, I just want to let you know that I really appreciate what you did. And I really appreciate the sacrifices you made. Right. That's different. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, because it's trite saying thank you for your service, right? It's like, you don't even, like you say, you, it's know, like, you know, somebody sneezes, you say, God bless you, right? Like, it's a thing. It doesn't yeah. wear. But when you're what you just the, the change you made there in that second statement was it was engagement. It was right. like, I see you, brother. I'm looking at you, man. Thank you. I, uh, I freaking appreciate like I really do. And maybe like even the next level that is, what do you need, man? And I think that's what you guys are doing. Like, what do you need, brother? What do you need? So how do I help you? You know what I love, man? I've been saying my brother, my brother, I've been saying that's talking that way since I'm a kid and watch some of the videos you guys had on on the radio check and stuff like that. And all of that, brother, brother, brother. Like that's look, man, I, I, I get cranky about a lot of things. I get cranky about mental health issues in this country, which we'll probably dive into, you know, in this next segment here, but it's that compassion. It's that connection. Like that's the stuff that's missing. That's where, where we, you know, and I don't mean just it, to your point, listen, I appreciate you challenging my own head on this, man, because I was think I'm, I'm sitting here going, wow. The fact that, when these folks are, are, are engaged in the military, they're a unit, they're solid, they got the guy next to them, you know, they're looking out for each other. And then you, and how, maybe there's some in civilian life, maybe it's too much of a rat race and people are not looking out for each other. I will tell you this though, in my experience in hanging out with nonprofit people, I find that there's a lot more, use the word camaraderie, there's a lot more looking out, it's less competitive, but I think you're telling a great story as far as we need to do something to change not just to change for, for veterans and when they come back, although we certainly need to do that as well, but to change in general, to change as a society that gives a shit about each other. And I never curse on this show, man, but you got me all fired up right now, but that give a shit about each other and then making that connection on the human level. Dude, how are you? What do you need? How can I help you? So- Ask that follow up. Right, what's how that? How are you? And when they answer, I'm fine. Ask them, no, no, no. Seriously, I don't know bro. how you are. Right. How, how you are you doing? Right, yeah. Yeah, because it's easy to say fine. I say fine to my ask wife again. when I'm cranky about something, right? But it's, it's ask again. You know, you're making an incredible impact. I, I We're never going to finish the whole story today because it's kind of part of the show. We never finished the whole story on the show. So you'll have to come back at some point. But when I come back, we're going to, everybody, we're going to take a two minute break. It's Tommy D. Fired up more than normal on the show today. Um, when we come back, James, I want you to tell us programmatically what actually happens. So somebody comes to you, they have a need and what it actually looks like, what, you know, we'll talk about the, the eventuality of mobile base. We'll talk blue skies. We'll talk radio check, right? We can jump into some of that when we come back. Sounds good. Sounds great. All right. Tommy D in the attic, James Corbett, Project Refit. We'll be back in two minutes. Stay tuned. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Yeah. 
Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program for philanthropy and focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. I am Joseph Franklin McElroy, host of the new podcast, Wise Content Gigs Wealth. It airs on talkradio.nyc every Friday afternoon from 1 p.m. to 2. They say content is king. Well, wise content rules the world. Every episode features tools and tips for content marketing and business people telling the wise content stories of that success. Tune in every Friday from 1 p.m. to 2 on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. Come to all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. All right, plan for you folks every Friday morning, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, just a quick shout out. A couple months, maybe a month and a half ago, I had the Heroes to Heroes Foundation on the show, which, James, if you don't know Heroes to Heroes, I'll hook you up with that group. But they do some work with um, with veterans who are experiencing moral injury and, and PTSD, and they, they do a uh, pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and they've had a really incredible impact. And it's, it's non-denominational. Uh, they're really just doing the work for those who need it. So there might be some connections for or uh, certainly what you guys are doing, a project refit, um, you know, complementary to what they're doing. You know, look, individuals come back, we, we, you know, and I had really only learned about that term, moral injury, um, on that program. But if you want to, if you guys are uh, want to learn more about that, it's the Heroes Heroes Foundation, but I did an episode, you can go to talkradio.nyc, go to Facebook, Talking Alternative Broadcasting, you'll find the video that um, Judy Isaacson had joined me on that show. So, Moral injury, uh, PTSD, lack of connection, right? This is some of the stuff that happens. So when, when folks are coming back and and they find you or, or one of their brothers brings them and says, you know what, check out my guy, James, check out Dan, check out Chris. What happens? What's, is there, you know, what's the process? Is there an intake? How do they get to some programming? Let's, let's talk about that. There's no, real, uh, there's no real intake process that we do because uh, it's pretty natural. It's... Uh, Usually the first step is going into our Radio Check Buddy check-in program, which we're going to be expanding really soon, actually. What's that program uh, about? And uh, so basically what that is, is uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have a Radio Check Buddy check-in program where guys come in to hang out. They shoot the shit. They need to talk. They can talk. Um, it's a place to come and hang out online just to talk to each other and, and not be so alone even at night. Um, and it helps some guys sleep. Like we, I'll give you a great example. This past Wednesday, we had two new people in there. Um, you know, it was a police officer and it was a, uh, a veteran, the veteran was experiencing some anxiety and just wanted to tire himself out, you know, before he was just to, to get to sleep. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, he accomplished that within an hour of talking to us, he, you know, he's laughing so hard and everything. And, and he's like, Oh, he's like, I'm tired, man. I'm, I'm going to go to bed now. And it's like, okay, cool, buddy. Go get your dress, you know? Um, and then, uh, you know, the other, the police officer actually came in, she was dealing with some some shit uh you know she's been going through a lot uh you know um 
She actually, her, her stepson uh, died of a self-inflicted wound to his neck. Um, and, uh, and then her uh, brother, who's 80% uh, uh, brain damage, uh, so he's mentally handicapped. Uh, he had a psychotic episode, so he, he almost uh, died as well. Um, but the stepson, like I said, he is, uh, he passed away. Uh, and then her roof in the same week, three days, started to collapse in on her. So right now we're trying to raise money for her to uh, give her 6000 to get her $6,000. Uh, and then um, we're going to actually travel down there with our truck that we just purchased, uh, which is a part of our mobile base because we're building the trailer. It's, a, it's our second program. Uh, so we can actually show up on missions directly to our you know, officers or veterans and be there with them when they're going through shit and help them in any way that we possibly can. Um, so in this case, she's, you know, needs her house, you know, built and repaired. So we're raising the money. We're going to travel down there. We're going to get some volunteers and put a team together and, uh, we're going to help rebuild her roof. Uh, what? Where, don't, uh, don't tell me where she is or obviously anything like that, but when is that something you're doing soon? When Hopefully they, when you yeah. head down there. Yeah. So yeah, what, do you, yeah. what do you need there? You need, you need the money. What, what's this? Yeah, we need, we need 6,000 cause we have volunteers, so we don't have to worry about labor costs. Um, so we need materials and the materials permitting and, uh, and dumpster, uh, that you need to have there. It all costs about $6,000. Um, we're looking to raise 8,500 right now, simply to cover our own costs, maybe some additional costs that, um, you know, are associated with her. Uh, so that's, that's the whole trip mission to go down there. So, uh, that, that's just one example for the mobile base. Uh, the mobile base, we also, we just got this truck. We just, yeah, I saw you putting it on social media and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I, I mean, months ago, you and I spoke and you told me about the mobile base and it was more of like a, you know, it was like, like a, an idea, like a future thing, but, but you got the truck now, right? We have the trailer too. Yeah, the, and Oh, you got uh, the trailer building, and the truck? Yeah. We're building the trailer right now. Okay. So uh, once the trailer is completed being built, where we have a full base, we have a full vision of, uh, the community of the future, which is a VFW American Legion on wheels. Right. Um, so you'll roll, you'll roll into a community. Maybe you'll roll into, you know, when guys and gals are coming back, you know, things like that. <laughs> so that is, that is correct. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, give them kind of like the, the community feel. And we're also, uh, one of the biggest problems though, that we're trying to solve, this is how the whole nonprofit started this program. Okay. There's a huge problem in the military of when they leave too, of staying in touch with your, your buddy, right? Staying in touch with your, your battle buddy, which is the guy that's right next to you 18 hours a day. And, you know, you check on each other, you see how each other are doing, you stay in each other's heads and lean on each other when shit gets tough. Right. Yep. So, um, essentially what we, what we did is we made that outreach process easier. So no matter where you're at, you can download our app called blue skies, Project Refit Blue Skies, at the tap of a button, you check in on your buddies, right? At the tap of a button. No need to make a call, 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 call. Right, You're trying to track them down. Yeah. And when you download this app, we're going to make it known that when you download this, you're downloading this with a purpose, that you're downloading this with a mission. And when guys say to you, I'm okay, you really need to follow up. Are you sure, bro? Like, come on, like, let me know what's up. Don't be afraid to ask the follow up right? This is a serious help with buddy checks. This isn't for therapy. This isn't for emergency calls. This is for the friends to check in on each other. So if they need the therapy, if they need the emergency help, they can help guide them to it. Is this app, this is live now or this is coming? Yeah. Okay. Because I saw the video, I saw the video cool. on the website. Who's the dude with the long hair that was like yelling about the app and stuff like His that? His name is Trip. He's also the author of Smoke Pit Fairy Tales. It is a- yeah. Yeah, I saw some. There was a logo, Smoke Fairy Tales. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. He's a yeah. he's a marine, yeah. an author, an artist. He's a friend. He's a great guy. He looks like a badass uh, dude though, too, man. Seriously, you know, I <laughs> I love the cool. Music. Yeah, he's yeah. cool. Um, so Trip is is good. Talk Trip. Uh, he's uh, yeah, Semper Semper is what he loves to say. Yeah, and he closed. That's what he, he just closed with Semper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so he he's great. Uh. And, you know, the app is really, it's dedicated to solving that problem for the brothers and the sisters to be able to easily check because life gets in the way, man. That's why even like, 
Uh, so the, the problem is, I, I actually didn't even get to the problem statement yet. The question that we asked here at Project Refit that's very unique is how many people served in World War II as opposed to serving today? 9% of the U.S. population, 9% of the U.S. population serves in World War II as opposed to approximately 0.5% of the U.S. population serves today. So active duty. That's fucking crazy, man. So, you know, like overall, if you include National Guard and everybody else, it is uh, like 1%, just about 1% of US population serves. So what that means, when you come back from war, you come back from conflict, you are very likely the only person in your entire town or city that serves. So there's, so where, where is that, right? So they, these, the rest of us who didn't serve have no com concept of what you've been through, right? You know, have all the things we've been talking about for the last 40 minutes, we don't understand it, right? We, it's, we, so you, what you're, if I'm hearing you right, the do. app creates though, but the app is creating that connection because there's there's so few of these individuals, you're not going to run into them in your neighborhood. And, and you and I talked about something too, like, look, there's a there's a legion down the block from my house, you know, VFW, et cetera. But, you know, are, are, young, are younger veterans, you know, really digging going to the American Legion and stuff? No, like, man, they want to do right? a lot of places. They want to do things. And that's right. why, uh, and they want to do things with their families too, right? right. right. So that's why we we will go take our mobile base wherever they want to go. Yeah. We're gonna we're actually a thing that we're gonna do that's really cool. I'd actually like to talk about this aside from like going to concerts and like local fairs and stuff and bring guys right. with us. Yeah. Um, I we actually really want to host. So we just did our first one uh, retreats, right? So we just did our first one in Colorado Springs. It was also the ending of our first major mission. Uh, where uh, his name is Greg Williams. He's a, he's a legit war hero. Um, and uh, you know, he's going through a rough time. He's 402 pounds. We helped kickstart his weight loss journey. Uh, we're actually going to be releasing that video soon, talking about that and talking about this journey. Um, and we completed a Spartan race with this, uh, with this guy. With a I saw other, you guys. I saw with you guys. On. Handicap, wounded vets, you know what I mean? So yeah. we, we got that shit done. Yeah. And, um, awesome. you know, we, we also at the same time had a retreat where we brought people together and from all walks of the country, every coast came to converge on Colorado Springs to run this thing in the Spartan race, right, together. And uh, we paid for all the tickets and stuff like that. Uh, we got- how, many, how big was the crew? I cooked for everybody. I think it was like 15, 16 of us. Yeah. Um, so you cook? Was, Tell me about your cooking. What's that about? Uh, that's, I, I, I want to get into more important shit. So the <laughs> thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to- um, we're trying to create reunions for military guys around our bases. What that means is a lot of these guys wait until Valhalla, till Valhalla, brother. No, stop that. Why wait until they're dead? Let's all meet each other again. Let's get you guys back. Guys that, that they served with, you're saying, right? You're yeah, that they served with or that their own companies and units. Listen, it's a brotherhood. It's a family. Yeah, like yeah. They just want to see their fellow brothers again, you know? Right. So, so are you facilitating that stuff like in real time? I mean, forget COVID. We're, we're coming out of that whole thing. In real time, but we're yeah. also looking to bring these guys to like locations around the United States to meet and converge. Almost like a high school reunion, but yeah. way cooler because it's actually yeah. the military. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to talk about events that you have coming up, fundraising events, things like that. Yep. I want you to tell me when we come back what you need. Not just checks. I know everybody's going to, you know, all nonprofits are saying, you need important. more money. But what do you need? What are, the, what are the connections and things like that? It's Tommy D with James Corbett. Plants being focused. We'll be back. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. Hey! 
Joseph Franklin McElroy, host of the new podcast, Gateway to the Smokies. It airs on talkradio.nyc every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 7. Every episode is dedicated to memorable experiences in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and surrounding areas. This show features experts and locals who expound upon the richness of culture, history, and adventure that awaits you in the Smokies. Tune in every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 on talkradio.nyc. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections. Vancouver's directions. Come through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Friday morning, join me in the attic this morning. It is James Corbett, Project Refit, founded the organization with his boys, Chris and Dan. We've been talking about the reunions that he, he intends on doing. We talked about Spartan races and retreats and, you know, the, uh, give me the app again. Blue Skies is the app, right? How do they, how do they download that? Is that you just go to the iStore, I, store, I the Apple store and, and you put in Blue Skies? Apple and Android, Project Refit Blue Skies. Type Project it Refit Blue, Blue Skies. That's out there. Check that out. Let's talk about some stuff. Let's talk about it. Right before the break, I said, you know, all organizations tell me we need checks, Tommy. We need money. And I know that. I know what the nonprofit space is about. But aside from, from the obvious, what about connections and, and volunteers? And maybe there's corporate, you know, sponsorships and things. I, I noticed from your site, you got a lot of sponsorship down in in your neck of the woods from, from locals and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. tell me about the need. Where can we make some connections for you? Yeah, we've got some, we've got some sponsors, but uh, I am going to say that we need monthly donors because I have to say that. All right. So that's incredibly important because uh, our missions are about showing up and being the most aggressive boots on ground nonprofit out there. That's, that's what we're doing. We're creating. So, a tell, so tell me 1775, 1776, what, tell me about that promo. So we have a we have a program going on the 1776 program where if you actually donate seventeen dollars and seventy six cents uh, and you cover the fee. So one it, it stands for obviously the founding of this country. Um, and 1775 is when the armed forces were founded. And 2017 is when Project Refit was founded. But if you become a donor of 1776 and cover the fees, it actually increases your donation because you you're covering the fees. So we get the 1776 and a transaction cost is taken care of to 1875. Now, what happened in 1875? The Civil Rights Act. So that means all men and women are made equal here in the eyes of the United That's when the United States uh, really became uh, power in its diversity, right? Um, and we overcame some hard times in our country's history. So that's why we have it to be 1776. And then if you cover the fee, it becomes 1875 per month. And that's again, uh, when everyone became equal. James, so, hang tight a second. I'm going to share my screen for everybody who's watching on Facebook. This is actually the donation page. I went to uh, I went to projectrefit.us, and you'll see 1775. 17. Now, this is this is how you set it up. You set it up as a month. I, I I took my credit card out as we were doing this because I was like, I got to just hook this up. But um, you do this right here on the website, and then it's a monthly recurring. I mean, God, 17 bucks a month. You know, it it it's not a lot of money, but it makes an impact when it uh when it really accumulates it right? honestly makes a tremendous impact yeah uh, to be completely honest with you it's it's allowing us and fueling us literally fueling our base to show up directly to these guys the thing that they that they uh know most is what's called a foxhole mentality the foxhole mentality that we came up with is the one where you show up you look to your left you look to your right and you see your brothers and sisters literally right next to you and we're ready to help you out right there so you're fueling a nonprofit that's actually showing up um, and, and the other thing too, is, uh, we do need volunteers. Of course, we're actually looking to expand, uh, our, our, we're looking to have chapters. Uh, we're going to have our chapters are going to be different zooms actually, where they get to host like once or twice or however many times a month they want to do this. They build their own uh, community on zoom 
And then they can actually go out and do, they can do it locally, have their guys locally join in the Zoom. And then they can go and do stuff together on weekends or they can, and then uh, they're, they're going to be raising $10,000 in a year. 25% of that money is going to come back to us, hopefully, so that we can uh, host these reunions for these guys and then bring all the chapters together, you know, four times a year. Uh, that's our goal is eventually hit four times a year. We're probably going to do it like two or one in the beginning, but four times a year to be able to be together and attract as many new guys as we possibly can to get them into the hands of other nonprofits. We'll have resources at these different events so that these guys can see what the hell is out there for them. Dude, I want to be a part of what you're doing. I want to help. I want to serve. I, I, I said this in the chat. I put it up as a hashtag. I decided that I'm doing 60 days of service this year before the year's out, you Let's know, go. and you know, so tell me where you need me, plug me in if, you know, and maybe it's this thing. I don't know if I can go back. I don't know if I can go up on somebody's roof, but um, I might be able to, to help when you go down we're and help traveling, that. We're traveling to Louisiana for that too. So I don't yeah, want to right. worry. All right. Listen, I, that, what a, I'm going to do my GoPro camera and a whole thing. What a good show that would be to tell everybody what we're doing and, and how we're making an impact. You know, cool. and I, and it ain't, it's not about me. And I've said this for weeks now. I'm not doing this to say how great Tommy D is because it's not that it's to inspire other people to do the service for nonprofit organizations. We talk right. a lot about service and it has a bunch of different meetings in this conversation today, obviously. Um, but I just feel like, you know, volunteering, uh, a lot of people who do volunteering do a lot of volunteering. And there's a lot of people who don't do any, you know, and I'm not, this is, maybe that sounded judgmental and I don't mean it to be judgmental, but maybe a, a day a month is right for you. Maybe a day a year is right for you. Whatever it is, get out there, do something, make a friggin' impact, man, because organizations like James's organization need help. They get, yes, monetary help, but also volunteers. They need bodies to help out. I'd like to also say something about that. It's not even making, it, it's also just good for you. It's, it's good for your brain. It's good to add. It's good to be a part of the society. It's actually good for you. It's good. For, that's what humans need. We're pack animals. That's why we love dogs and shit, right? Like, like there's a, there's a reason why we fight better in a team. That's why we do better as a team. Um, and I think that's something that's a message that's missing right now in the United States. And when you're, when you're doing service, you're a part of society and you're, you're making this country even more beautiful. Um, and you can play a part in that, I promise. It, and, and yes, it's, of course, it's helping nonprofits, but go out and you can do shit on your own. Like right on. You can literally go out on your own and give guys socks if you want. Cause we do a thing called clean socks club here at Pride Street, where we go out and we hand socks out to homeless people and Right food and whatever else we possibly can and we do it like every week we give something we give no listen i want stuff I, out. I, I want to do something we, I, I have a friend of mine who's on the show a couple weeks ago aaron dynan founded an organization called one sandwich at a time and they make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and they bring them out to folks who really need them they make Tommy, all let's go out into what's a city near you i'm on long island man there's a big city called new york city you might have let's heard go of to new york city you and i i'll come up one day we'll create a whole thing out of it and yeah, yeah. hand out some socks to homeless people in new york city done, done. that's like you you don't have to like don't threaten me with a good time kind of deal man let's just right. that's done i said it here i said it on the show james and i committed to it we'll put a bunch you are you interested in that gang you want to be part of that 60 days of service that'll be one of the days where james and i go out that's what we're supposed to be doing friends like, that's it. That's the deal. We're supposed to be making an impact. We're supposed to be helping other people out. We're not supposed to just work hard to make money to buy more shit. James, I've never cursed on this show, and James Corbett's got me cursing like crazy today. It's incredible. <laughs> but that's not it, man. It's not buying more materialistic garbage. Man. It's all nonsense. It's overrated, right? It's nice to have nice things. But you know what? Other people, here's James. You know what drives me absolutely crazy? You talk about New York City, talk about Philadelphia, whatever, right? That somebody is inside a restaurant eating a hundred and fifty dollar steak, and ten feet away there's somebody eating out of a garbage bill. That's a problem. Okay, that's a problem in this country. There's a lot of problems in this country. And we're not going to solve them all inside of sixty minutes on my show. There's a lot of beautiful we, too. But the, what's that? There's a lot of beautiful in this country too. I'm, you know what? Thank you for doing that. But I'm I, the reason I, I'm doing this is I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to get people pissed off for great you. over here. You know, I, I'm with you. I like there's a great it's a beautiful place, man. But there's there's the haves and have nots is a problem in this country. Um, it, that's that's the deal. You and I, that's it. We're committed. You and me, we're going to put together a bunch yeah. of people. They call it the 100 sandwich challenge. All right. Somebody makes, a, you know, challenge somebody. They make 100 PB and J sandwiches. And then you and I go hand them out with socks, socks and sandwiches. Maybe that's a website, socks and sandwiches. That, that would be a good one. Um, when can 
where exactly are you guys located? And when? Uh, so when, we're in South you, Jersey. We're in yep. South Jersey, Voorhees, New Jersey. Um, we don't really have like a location though. Uh, right. We're very, we're very remote. Um, and we like being remote because that gives us the flexibility to drive to Louisiana. Yep. Um, and it also gives us the flexibility to go to Colorado Springs. It gives us the flexibility to go to Atlantic city. What so, though, when, when you like, I, I know you've done car shows, right? You've done like, did you do cornhole? Was that one of your deals? Like what, what is Yeah, we're actually, we're hosting, I'm going to be launching that out, uh, today. Uh, we have a cornhole tournament coming up in August. We have a we have a, a car cruise that is being held on our behalf in November down in North Carol or South Carolina, um, or no, I'm sorry, North Carolina. My apologies, North Carolina. And we're having a, hopefully our own car cruise. I've been trying to find a location for it because uh, there was a police officer that took his own life earlier this year. We helped the family raise over thirty five thousand dollars, and I'm trying to bring it back to that community. That yeah, car cruise right. to drive past that officer's house right. to show the the widow. We're still here. We have not forgotten about you. And we, we hope you're doing okay and raise some money and awareness even for the police department and fire department to know, hey, hey, we're here. We're ready for you whenever you yep. need it. Um, so so look, we got to bring to a close really quick. I, I just want to know about those gala events. Too. What's that? We have a gala too that's being held when, on our when's the gala? September, September 18th. Where's that? It's in uh, South Jersey. All right. So listen, if you want to learn more about Project Refit, go to projectrefit.us. The letter J at projectrefit.us is how you get in touch with my buddy, James Corbett. We haven't even met in person, bro. I can't wait to meet you and give you a big hug. I love what you're doing. I freaking love it. You got me fired up right now. I'm going to like, my head's going to explode in the attic. It's your boy. This is the end of the show for today. It's the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from the attic every single week. I'm going to bring in another leader of a nonprofit organization to tell their story so I can help them amplify their message. Stay tuned to the network. Steve Fry will be here with Always Friday, followed by Jeremiah Fox on the entrepreneurial web. And after that, it's Joseph Franklin McElroy talking to you about why wise content creates wealth. My boy, Sam Leibowitz on the other side of the class, executive producer extraordinaire. Thanks for the work, Sam. James Corbett, I appreciate everything you're doing. And I mean that. That's not me saying thanks for your service, brother. I'm saying thank you for what you're freaking doing. You're making an impact. Let me know how I can help. 60 days of service. I want to be part of what you're doing down there too. Hashtag 60 days of service. Watch your boy get out there and try and help you inspire others to do some work. Make it a great day. I'll see you later. Bye. Let's go. Let's go. Nonprofits need connections. Movement through directions. Cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic.